and welcome to our Unit 6 review. We learned about two different forms of equations. The equations represented what the, a linear function looks like or what a function looks like. Um, the first form that we learned about was the standard form, ax plus by equals c. And I really like that form because in that form I can actually figure out all of the x, y values that are going to make that equation true. They're all going to live on a line, the line that I'm going to graph by finding the intercepts and graphing it. So since this equation is in standard form right here, 2x minus 3y equals c, I can figure out what the intercepts are. So the x-intercept is where my y value is equal to 0. So since my y value is equal to 0, 3 times 0 is 0, I can just kind of get rid of this whole thing. I end up with 2x equals 12. That means x is equal to 6. So I know that my, on my x-axis, I'm going to be plotting a 6. I can figure out what my y-intercept is because for my y-intercept, my x value's got to be 0. So that means I can kind of get rid of that. And I end up with negative 3y equals 12. And if I divide both sides by negative 3, I get y is equal to negative 4. That means on my graph, my y-intercept is going to be negative 4. So on my y-axis, I will plot negative 4. And if I connect the lines, which is actually already there, um, I've got my solution. That means this point, this xy, makes that solution true. Even this point makes it true. This point makes it true. All of these ordered pairs, anywhere on my line, I can plug those xy values into this equation, and 2x minus 3y will be 12. Kind of cool. For slope-intercept form, now I know I've already drawn the line for you like for, for speed, but if, pretend the line's not there. Um, since it's in slope-intercept form, I know that the b is my y-intercept and the m is my slope. My slope here is negative 3, so I'm going to put that over 1 because I know I'm, the way I'm going to use slope is it's going to be my rise over my run. And negative 3 over 1 is the same thing as negative 3. So my first step is to plot my y-intercept my y-intercept 7. So my y-axis, I'm going to find 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Okay. And my slope is negative 3, which means I'm going to go down 3 and over 1 to get to my next point. Down 3 over 1. Down 3 over 1. And when I connect those points, which another line's already there, okay. when I connect those points, I've actually found all the solutions to this equation. Every single point on this line, if I look at its xy value, it'll make this equation true. So for example, this is, I see I have a 1, 4 on here. 1, 4. So let's, let's see if it makes it true. That means my x has got to be 1 and my y has to be 4. Negative 3 times 1 plus 7 should give me according to my ordered pair. So negative 3 plus 1 is negative 3. Negative 3 plus 7, does that equal 4? Oh yeah, it does. So any point I choose on my line is going to make that equation true. I have found all the solutions. Let's quickly look at what the idea of slope is. Slope is the rate of change of my y, whatever my y variable is, to my x variable. So, um, We've talked about it in many different ways. We've talked about it when we're looking at a graph, and we know that our slope, oops, excuse me, our slope is the rise over the run. So I should be able to pick any two points on my line because the rate of change is the same for that whole line, and calculate the rise over the run and get my slope. So I'll go ahead and choose um, this point here, and I'll choose, I don't know, this point here. Okay, let's figure out our rate of change. Let's figure out our slope. Now notice my graph goes from 6, 4, 2, 0, negative 2 on the y-axis, and then um, goes every other, or goes every unit on the x-axis. So just pay attention to that scale. So I like to go from my leftmost point to my rightmost point. So I'm going to go, let's see, 
going from here to here, my rise is going to be 2, 4, 6. Negative 6 because I'm going down. And then I go from negative 1 to 2 on my x-axis, called my run. It's going to be going 1, 2, 3. 3. In a positive direction. So my rise is negative 6, and my run is 3, and that simplifies to negative 2. That tells me my slope is negative 2. And just looking at it, I realized that my slope was negative because it's going in a downward direction. You guys remember um, Wonder Man? What it stands for? Vertical is undefined. Horizontal line is the slope of 0. Now, when I'm trying to figure out what the slope is of a table, I need to use the formula that I use is slope equals delta y over delta x. And the delta is a Greek letter. It represents the change. So I'm looking for the change in my y variable over the change in my x variable. So going from um, 6 to 4, oh, that means I would be going subtracting 2, decreasing by 2. Going from negative 2 to negative 1, oh, I'm adding 1. So my change in y is negative 2, change in y, and my change in x is, oh, excuse me, not negative, is positive 1. So it's going to give me negative 2. My slope's negative 2. But it's the same thing since these are, these points represent this line. Um, now, the last thing we talked about is how do we figure out what the slope is if we are actually just given two points? We're not given a graph. We're not given a table. We're just given two points. So let's, I'm um, just going to pick any two random points that I happen to know are on this line. I'll pick uh, this point here, 2, negative 2, and I'll pick, um, I don't know, negative 1, 4 for fun. So I've got negative 1, 4, and 2, negative 2. So we're just given those two points. In order to find our slope from two points, we use our slope formula. Our slope formula is y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And it doesn't matter which order these points are in. Just write them down, but what's very important to me is that you actually label each xy ordered pair with the proper variables so that you don't get all confused. So each point, see this point here, this is actually an xy because it's an ordered pair. This point here, this is actually an xy because it's an ordered pair. So with that in mind, I've got two xy, so I've got to differentiate them. So I'm going to call this one x1, and I'm going to call this one y1. I'm going to call this one x2, and I'm going to call this one y2. Now let's plug those values into our formula and see what we get. So y2 is negative 2 minus y1, which is 4, over x2, which is 2, minus x1, which is negative 1. Ooh, I get what I'm doing. I need to change that guy make my life easier. And for those of you who like to, you can leave here and change that as well. So on top, I'm going to get negative 6. And on the bottom, I'm going to get 2 plus 1 is 3. So my slope is negative 2, which is the same as it was when I looked at it as a table and when I looked at it as a graph. Are we good? Move on to the review.